In this video, we're going to go over the menu bar path menu. It's the fourth one from the left, okay? So let's go ahead and go to Union and Intersection, our first. So let's come up here. And if I select all three of these, and I go, well, first of all, let me show you that I have the cut lines that are overlapping, okay? And I do path union. It's gonna take those inside parts away. And then my cut lines are exactly the same as what this looks like. It's gonna cut here, all right? Uh, union, you can union as many things together as you'd like, but it's permanent. So if I union this and I go on and I do a bunch of other stuff, I can't break this apart, I can't ungroup it, I can't do anything other than undo. So if I did 15 other things, I'd have to undo those 15 other things before I got back to this to undo this. So if you know you're gonna want something permanently welded then use path union if not i would suggest coming over here to your style panel and just using weld and then if i show my cut lines the gray is not going to cut so it essentially does the exact same thing but it's not permanent i can just unclick this and we're back to our original pieces all right so then same thing for text. Uh, if I go ahead and union it, show my cut lines, there's no overlapping lines, but it's permanent. So again, you can do your welding over here and it's not permanent. You can see those gray lines there. They're not going to cut. It just shows you that they were there right and that you can undo that so if i undo it i'm back to overlapped letters all right now uh the next thing that we have is path intersection okay with intersection you can only have two things selected at a time so this pattern here is grouped and a group is considered one object all right, and then my flower, if I come over here and select it, my flower is one. So I can select both of these and do path intersection. And what that's gonna do is uh, cut out all the hearts around the flower and put hearts inside the flower, just like that, okay? So again, if I come back up here to my circles and I have these two overlapping and I do path, well, I have three, I think. Yeah, I did. All right, path intersection, then it cuts out everything except it leaves the overlapped piece, all right? So this is where they were overlapped, and that's what intersection keeps the overlapped pieces, okay? So then we come to exclude, and with exclude, if I select these two objects and I go path exclude, then it does the opposite of intersection. It cuts out where it intersects and it leaves the rest of the, the objects. Now I can go to object break apart and I can move those apart. Okay, so let me get back to here. And then also for, let's see, exclude. I have, uh, let's say I wanted to make a cart, 
card, can't speak, with that flower that we did earlier with intersection. So here I have a five and a half by four and a half card, piece of card stock, we'll call it. And I'm gonna select that, hold shift and select that flower and make sure that both of these are selected. And then I'm gonna to go to path exclude. And why did that change it to green? Mm, not sure why it changed it to green, but I do have a piece of yellow cardstock under there, or a yellow square actually. But uh, so let me move this up here. You can see that it cut out our intersection piece that we did over here somewhere there it is uh, from the card base so if I say this is the front of the card and it folds right here and I have a piece of yellow cardstock glued to the back side of the screen, then that's one way that you could use that, okay? And then we have uh, front minus back and back minus front, okay? So both of my circles are on top of these rectangles. So for front minus back, you can only have two objects selected again and front minus back leaves the front but it cuts out the back wherever it was overlapped okay and back minus front cuts out whatever's in front into the back and leaves the back okay that's how that works. So then we have <clears throat> Path Simplify. So let me get a new page here. And I'll just type out something as I always do. <laughs> and let me see if I can find a... I, what I need to do is select that and go to text font preview. And I need to make this box larger. And I want to bring this down because I need a skinny kind of font. I'll just use this one. Okay. And let me enlarge that. Okay, now if I go to Path <clears throat> Simplify, it tells me that I have 250 nodes and it has simplified it down to 114. But if I go ahead and I bump this up to let's say 50 and I preview that and I click OK, you can start to see how it's distorting. Let me go back to Path Simplify again, and I'll do 90. And I'll preview that. Click OK. And see how it's distorting, sort of? So when you use Simplify, you want to really zoom in on stuff and make sure that it's not distorting. Um, here you can really see it. Distorting whatever it is that you're simplifying. But simplifying is good to use because it reduces the nodes. Therefore, it takes less time to cut. And it um, is also 
easier on your machine because if you have 2,500 nodes when you could have 1,500, that's a thousand less points from point A to point B that your cutter is going to have to make, right? So that is path simplify. And then we have split path. Okay, so let's say this is a front of a card, okay? And we are going to score this side. Well, you can use split path. If I go to my shape tool and select these two nodes by holding shift, I can come up to path, split path, and what that does is it cuts that off. Now, I can either score this with a scoring tool. I can change this over here and fill in stroke to a dashed line and my cutter will cut the dashed line or I can just leave it off completely and it won't cut this side of the card at all. So if I select this I can get it selected, there we go, and put this back here, then it's going to cut a dashed line, okay? So that's kind of what split path does. It splits it up where you can take it out or do whatever you want with it, okay? So next on the path menu is reverse path. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle here and I'm going to have no fill and I gave it a bright green um, outline or stroke, okay? Now, if I select this, well, first of all, let me say, if you are having an issue cutting a shape, sometimes it will help to reverse the path. And how you would do that is select it and go to uh, right click and go to path path details and this box will pop up let me try to make it a little bit larger okay and if you click on this first line here it's going to show you the um, starting point of where your cutter is going to start the cut and then it's going to show you how it's going to travel. It's going to travel from here to here and then here to here and then of course you know here to here and then the next one will be here to here to complete the circle. But if you're having an issue with it maybe completing completely then what you can do is go to uh, right click path and reverse path. You can also go to path uh, reverse path here. Okay, so now when I select it and I right click, I go to Path Details and I click on the first one, it's going to start here, but then it's going to come this way around rather than this way around. Okay, um, so that's how the path reverse path works. So the next thing we have is Object to Path. If I go ahead and draw out a circle here and I will just select it and duplicate it. Well actually at first I want to come over here to the documents panel and show the outline only okay and then I want to go to my fill and stroke and give it a dashed line and I'll give it this one and then I want to duplicate that. All right. Now this one, I'm going to apply a path, object to path. And if you watch what happens when I, uh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. This is supposed to be to selection. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> if you watch what happens to these dashed lines when I resize it, the one on the left keeps its size. The one on the right 
does not because the one on the right is now little shapes of rectangles going in a circle. It's no longer a dashed line. It's actually a path of little rectangles going around in the circle. All right, so then on to closed path. So for a closed path, if I check my nodes here, you can see that it goes from point A to B, C, all the way around, and it ends at the same point. Okay, that's a closed path. That's why I have color in it. So this one here, I drew with my draw tool, and it's not closed. So I can come up here to path, closed path, and it's going to draw a straight line from one end of the open path to the other, okay? And this one I drew with the freehand <clears throat> path, close path, and it closes the path. But it doesn't have color, so let me go ahead and give it a color, and then it is filled in, okay? This one was a circle where I just split the path between two nodes and again path close path and it closed the path it doesn't have a color so i will give it a color okay so that's how closed path works and if you are using your draw tool and you're drawing stuff and sometimes you'll not get exactly inside the node and you can't figure out well why isn't it filling with color and that's because if you zoom in far enough you'll see that it's not closed okay so in that case you would want to close it okay so that is closed path so for joint paths here i have let me zoom in i've drawn um, two lines with my pen, <clears throat> my draw tool. And let's say I want to join these to make it one. Well, first of all, actually, let me zoom in even closer. You have to get them pretty close, right? So let's say I just put that there. Now you can see that they are uneven. But if I go ahead and select all, because it's the only two things I have on my page, I can go to path, join paths, and you can see that it made it one straight path instead of two skewed, okay? Uh, you know, I don't know how much you'll use that, but it's there. Okay, so then we have offset path. So with offset path, if I choose this letter, come up to path, offset path. I have the options of growing it or doing inset. So first, let's just do regular. We have rounded and bevel. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and choose this to be at 200. And when I click OK, you're going to see the difference. All right. Now, this totally changed the shape of my letter. All right. If I come here to this one, path, offset path, and I click inset, you can see that the uh, lines here are on the inside of the letter rather than the outside. So if I click OK now, it's going to actually shrink my letter, okay? And these are permanent changes where if I go to Effects, Shadow Layer, Contour Cut, and here I have the same thing. I have uh, shadow, shadow, rounded, shadow, straight. 
And if I grow this, you can see that it's gotten larger. Now I'll click OK. But here it keeps my original shape and just adds a shadow layer. So that's the difference between the effects shadow layer and the path offset path. Now there is another scenario where you could use the offset path and that's with um, tracing images. Sometimes you'll have like a white outline around them from the white background. You can use it for that. Uh, when I get to tracing, I'll show you about how to fix those kind of images. All right, so then on to stroke to path. All right, so for stroke to path, I'm gonna just draw a little line here I'll hold shift so it goes straight across and hit enter to end my section there. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this so it's easier for you to see what's happening. All right. Maybe even a little closer. Okay. So now if I select this line, you could see that it is just a line. It will cut like that. If I want it to be a rectangle, and not cut that line, then I will go to path, stroke to path. And now if I select it in preview, you can see that it has three lines. It actually has the stroke and the path that goes around the outside and it will cut like that. So in order to get rid of that inside shape or stroke, I should say, what I have to do is break it apart. So I can select it and go to Object Break Apart, or I can right click and break apart. And then when I do that, I can select, let me go to my preview. I can select the stroke line and get rid of it. And now I have a continuous path that will go around that line uh, without cutting down the center, okay? So I'll go ahead and delete that. And that's what stroke to path does. So there's been an update um, since I made the video. And I just wanted to show you that um, you no longer have to break apart your stroke from your path. Um, if I go ahead and draw a line here, and I'll zoom in on it pretty tight. Okay, and I'll give it a color. Now, if I preview this, you're going to see that it's just a straight line, okay? And that's how it's going to cut. If I wanted to cut this rectangle shape, of course, I could take a re rectangle and make it thin and be done with it. But if you're using your draw tools and you need to turn a stroke into a path, you would go to, well, first you would select it and then go to path, stroke to path. And then what happens is it puts a path around that stroke. So if you want it to cut that path and not that stroke, then you can just pull it apart. You no longer have to um, apply object break apart for them to separate, okay? So then you can just go ahead and delete your stroke and you have your path, all right? 